welcome to another Fusion Friday. I am still the one and only Fusion Phil here today to talk about when and where you should use facing or possibly utilizing a contour tool path, kind of like on the lathe. As you can see here, as I have a traditional facing cycle on the X negative. However, I'm just using that turning profile finish tool path and still facing the front of my part. Or when you're sitting here utilizing your mill, when should I use a face on the top of my part versus a horizontal and a flat? Let's go ahead and jump into this, y'all, and get it going. As you can see here, I have my part pulled up. I'm going to go ahead and initiate a traditional facing cycle and set that up to be able to work with and then show the difference between when and where you wouldn't want to use it. So let's start by creating our setup. In this case, I would like my Z pointed backwards. I'm also going to use a fixed size cylinder for stock. And in this case, let's just say our stock is a hair bigger than our part. Again, I'm not too concerned about a lot of these settings right now because the main idea is we just want to look at our traditional facing cycle and see how that is going to play out based on what we have going on. So I'm just grabbing an 80 degree tool. We're going to turn on multiple passes because there was a little bit more than standard stock. And again, we have now created our normal facing procedure. Facing something like this works amazing when you have a very large flat surface at the front of your part. Um, nothing wrong with using this facing cycle, plain and simple. If I was to duplicate this in the event I was going to turn this part over or I was going to work back the opposite way on a sub spindle, and I'm just going to very quickly flip back the other way, and then we're going to regenerate that. So now we're looking at it basically in our flipped operation. As you can see, we are still doing that facing procedure that we did in the first half. We're just doing it on the back half of the part. Again, whatever way you wanted to orientate this and start. The only problem that I see with this is we're kind of wasting cycle time facing more than we actually need to do or thinking to ourselves, well, if I'm going to rough all this out, in theory, I could actually do that facing procedure all with my actual finish pass. And that's the idea we're trying to get across, right? Is how do we reduce cycle time? How do we make this a little more efficient? So let's go ahead and delete that facing. And let's go in and create our roughing cycle. I'm going to leave everything default with the exception. I want to start from stock front, not model front. And what you're going to see is we're now roughing this all the way down the front of my part and all the way to the back or whatever your rear reference point is. The key element there was setting that to stock front versus model front. Because when I come back to do my finishing cycle, if you like to derive your tool path like I do, again, I can go ahead and hit OK. And as you're seeing, we haven't drilled or bored this hole or anything yet, but I can actually start down here and create just a single swipe for my facing procedure all in one shot. So again, instead of having that additional 12, 20 seconds or whatever of cycle time, I could actually get that in my roughing cycle where I'm moving faster and quicker and then come back and actually touch those faces based on my finishing cycle that's going to reduce the number of tool paths. Again, a kind of neat trick if you all didn't know, I could actually change this from a horizontal pass to a vertical pass. And as you can see, it's basically a facing cycle, but it's designed for a roughing pass. So again, I would still come back with my finishing cycle. Another kind of neat trick here is, you know, instead of doing front to back, maybe we do back to front. And again, we're now back dragging that downwards and inwards to the beginning of our part. So this is a good example of when and where to use a facing cycle. Let's jump to another part. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to this quick release part. And right off the start, my mindset is, is I've traditionally faced this part off. Then I've gone in and I've roughed it out. And then finally, I did that finishing profile already set up to go all the way to center. So in my mindset, what is the point of me spending all that extra time if I don't need to, to face this, right? So again, as you could remove one of your actual operations, again, I may need to change my roughing cycle to stock front, not model front. And again, maybe I do an outside in roughing cycle. Again, nothing wrong with either one of those. We go for those vertical passes. And this is all preference at the end of the day. But again, I can dramatically reduce, you know, excess motion, excess tooling needed to get to that final product being in the same realm, all nice and clean and shaved up. 
So again, we're going to do this one more time. This time, we're going to treat this as if this was a mill turn part on the back side. Again, I'm going to go into manufacture. If I'm not in there already, I create my setup. We're going to use a fixed size cylinder. And with that, now looking at this rear part of my material, this is where I make that decision. Is it going to be better to do a traditional facing, which I'm going to program that up here again with my lathe tooling. So in this case, I don't have my lathe tooling turned on. Let me go ahead and pull this over here real quick. Again, let's just pull a right-handed tool in. And as you can see, because of the spun profile and things of that nature, it's automatically recognizing outside to inside. Again, multi-passes for a safety procedure. Now, if I was to program this up, again, I would possibly do a roughing cycle. There's no point to do a roughing cycle because there's nothing there when we're spinning that actual lobe. So if I was to go straight into my turning finish, again, we're going to start from possibly stock front. And the reason why we're saying stock front is because we want that tool path to come all the way out past the front of the model, right? So let's just take a look here. Again, yes, we're doing the whole outside profile of this part. I may adjust my actual length, how deep into my part I want to go. Let's go to a selection point. Normally, we would have done this all in our roughing cycle, but the idea is still the same. So we have that facing operation, and then we have our finishing operation that we're still able to get that front and that OD turn all in one go around. So again, every scenario is different based on what you're doing. The idea here is to think a little bit outside the box, reduce your number of operations, and even make your programming much easier and simpler. Again, I could actually go in and create that roughing cycle. So I'm going to do it backwards this time. We're going to say turning profile rough. Again, I like to do either vertical or horizontal passes and set that up. So again, we'll drag and drop. So we go in, we rough that part out. We're starting all the way out at the stock end, and then I use a turning profile finish. I really have no need for a facing cycle. So let's jump over and look at some mill parts. So as we see with our electronic closure here, we're going to go ahead and start with a traditional facing on the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and select my face tool path, hit OK, which is one of my most important things. And anytime you're missing anything, of course, it's going to prompt you to add whatever is missing. So now on the back side of this enclosure, because of my stock, given the fact that there's so much flat area, this is a perfect time to use like a two inch face mill to come in and just deck off the back side of this block. However, again, based on tool changes, machining time, things of that nature, it may not be worth it, right? So let's go ahead and go to the other side of my part. Again, we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate this guy with control D, or you can actually right click duplicate. And I'm just gonna drag and drop and then regenerate. So again, my X and my Y have shifted here. We're facing off the entire part using that two inch shell mill. The problem is, is I only have this actual area that needs to be flattened out. And later on, I'm gonna have to do something to the floor of the pocket. Let's take a look at another strategy. Let's go for a 3D horizontal here. So with a 3D horizontal, we can actually swap our end mill out to possibly something smaller. Again, let's go for that half inch flat. We're just gonna go with the finishing speed and feed. And we're going to let the software do the work by hitting OK. So now looking at this, we're actually acquiring and cleaning up the entire top surface as well as the floor to that pocket. So very handy here. Instead of spending all that time, that's 18 seconds according to Fusion. It might be off a little bit. For three extra seconds, realistically, I'm also doing the entire bottom pocket. This is where we see a ton of value and a ton of speed because based on that, I probably would have roughed out this part, 3D adaptive clearing, we'll say aluminum rough, for example, and reorder this a little bit. So I keep that same tool from my roughing profile into my finishing profile. And again, boom, there's all my roughing, no tool change, we go straight into finishing. And that's how I kind of perform and do my stuff. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste these up above to again, see what that looks like looking down from the other side. So again, the idea was is we would do something with this backside first and then we would flip it. Although my roughing doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot, again, that horizontal toolpath is coming in kind of handy. 
Um, again, I'm probably going to clean up the outside of this part with that same half inch end mill. Like we're looking at 21 seconds into 23 seconds. This is how we could squeeze cycle time for those higher quantity runs, but it's also how we can actually just continue to use the same tool as much as possible and get that cycle time down. Another one that I like a ton is the actual flat tool path. So flat is semi new still. Um, again, I'm just going to leave it pretty much plain as day, throw my finishing speeds on there and let it calculate and do what it needs to do. So again, as we're working on the backside here, it's a little different strategy all over. And what you're going to notice is the time is about double. Well, my step over is dramatically different. So again, let's go into the horizontal tool path. And what you're going to notice is this has an automatic step over in horizontal. I could actually give it a manual step over if I want. That's a half inch tool. Let's say we're going to go 400 step over. And then in my flat tool path, we're going to go ahead and edit the same thing. So again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say my step over isn't 0.075, but let's go 0.4. And again, we're going to notice that some of these cycle times get dramatically less. However, we're getting dramatically different results. We're going to get a dramatically different surface finish even at the end of the day. So personally, there's no right or wrong ever. Sometimes it's just about how fast you can make a part or what's going to save you based on tooling you have, tooling you don't have. Again, I like to say us machinists are so lazy we're efficient. Either ask your spouse or ask your boss. They'll both give you different answers. But if I didn't have a face mill in that machine, what's it going to take for me to put in a face mill, right? Like that's setup time. That's a lot of work to just put a two-inch mill in there to clean up the top of a part that I could actually knock out with a horizontal or a flat. So let's jump over to a couple other parts. I'm actually going to copy these with control C and let's move over to this clutch cover. So again, same kind of theory. We're doing the backside here. Let's go ahead and actually grab our facing, our horizontal and our flat. We're going to go into that clutch cover. We're going to right click and you can paste or you could control V. You will get this warning. The idea is, is you're getting that warning because all these tool paths need to be regenerated. And we are getting some other errors outside of that. In this case, my stock is very possibly in the wrong setting. So again, let's go into that face tool path. We're working at a stock top of zero and a model top is what we want to face to. In this case, I already know what the problem is, is my stock for this part is the same size as my actual part. We'll just bump this up real quick to an inch and a quarter, regenerate everything, and now we have clean tool paths. So again, this is a bigger part. We're working with a bigger piece of stock. And lastly, we're looking at how much of a flat area are we really working with? We're actually not working with very much at the top of my part at the end of the day. So again, is maybe a horizontal strategy is going to be a better fit because it's cleaning up, again, all the different flats inside my part as we step down in here. We do have this upper flat, that step, and then this entire bottom area. But again, we compare that to the flat strategy. That flat strategy is coming in with, again, an impeccable amount of time to be able to do stuff. So we'll do this one more time. We're just going to go ahead and paste everything into this next operation. And I'm going to adjust this stock because this would be the flip of this part. So we could actually turn on continuous rest machining on this one. Regenerate. Again, facing the whole top of my part. But again, we only have this kind of little logo or symbol on this clutch cover that is important. So again, we look at what horizontal is going to do. We're going to look at what flat can do. A couple other things that's nice as you get into more and more advanced tool paths. For example, flat offers rest machining. So when you go from a bigger end mill to a smaller end mill, when we start to talk about some of these smaller pockets, keep in mind certain 3D tool paths do have rest machining. Horizontal does not. So again, that might lead you more into using the flat tool path, again, instead of using that facing tool path or horizontal. Last go around here, we have that uh, mudguard mold here. Uh, again, I'm just going to paste all those tool paths in. Just like you've all seen, we're going to get a couple of things real quick that are going to tell us that it's not going to work for certain reasons. And we're going to go ahead and regenerate. So again, we may actually face off the whole top of this part just because it's a raw piece of material. It's a very large block. We actually could almost do what I would call decking with a bigger shell mill just to ensure we're perfectly flat. Now, from that, again, we can look at a horizontal tool path 
versus a flat toolpath. Again, neither are right or wrong, but maybe in this case, we want to do a combination of one with the other. Well, just like every other 3D toolpath, I can always do a selection for a boundary. I'm going to go ahead and first click my chain, and then I'm going to click that chain again that allows me to modify where it goes. So again, as I'm limiting it to this pocket, let's go ahead and hit OK, and then OK again. And just like that, we're going to retain that flat only inside my boundary at the end of the day. So this will take a little bit to calculate, but again, I could face off the entire top, then I could come back and do my flat strategy only where I want it using that boundary. Guys, I appreciate you every Friday checking out my videos. I think last week we hit all-time high. We're just up over 900 views on that video, doubling every other video we had. All I ask of you is don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. Leave comments on the content you all would like to see. And don't forget, you can always download our actual plugin inside of the actual app store inside of Fusion 360. Keep in mind that you can put in your cases anytime you all need help. And just like that, Go out, get the day done, get to that five o'clock somewhere kind of mentality.